thanks so much for stopping by. If you are new to my channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you receive notifications whenever I post something new. Today I'm going to be getting a series of painting birch tree designs on actually on beer glasses. So something a little new and I've actually never painted the birch trees before so I am going to be winging it. I'm actually going to start though by coating each one of my glasses with the Glam Gold, the multi-surface paint by Folk Art, just to give it a good base. I have taped all of my glasses and I'm just going to demonstrate on one so you don't have to go through each one that I'm doing because I'm doing a total of eight. So I'm going to go ahead using my 3 8 Dynasty Art it's a, not Dynasty Art, but Dynasty paintbrush. It's Glass Art number 71. And again, I'm trying to hold this up so you can see it. Love these brushes. If you're new to my videos, you probably aren't aware, but I love these brushes for coverage, especially when you're doing, just doing a base coat or, I mean, even with designs, but typically, they're really great when you're using one color I'm finding. Now I haven't experimented too much with them on doing any kind of multi colors so I'm just really familiar my experiences with trying to do coverage like this because they're they're very soft bristled and I'm assuming that's probably one reason what makes them so nice to work with when you're dealing with glass. Now, one of the reasons why I like to add a base coat, and I don't do this on all of my all of my designs, but I do it a lot. And I just thought for the purpose of this design, it would be kind of nice to have a little bit of glittering in behind the design and give it a little bit more durability because of there being extra coats of paint, but not too thickly applied. That's one thing. I do stress in my videos that first of all you need to clean your, your glassware before you paint on it. Soap and water, rinse dry. If you want to then add the next step which would be taking a cotton ball, makeup remover, paper towel, and using rubbing alcohol over it to make sure that all the grime and grease is removed that would be perfect. At least make sure you, you clean them off before you start. It just helps the paint adhere better to your glass. Then when you're painting glassware, the thicker you apply your paint, the more durable it will be. The only thing I do need to note here is that you want to be careful if you are baking your glassware to not put it on too thickly or bubbling could cause be caused when it heats up. So just a nice coat. Just be careful with it so it's not too thick. If you do have a design that is very is really thick, if you're using the Folk Art brand, it does not require baking. You can bake it. That does help with the durability, but it also will cure if you let it dry, air dry for 21 days. Now, honestly, with my experience with it, if you let it dry for 20, you know, dry for maybe a day or two, you could probably still use it. Definitely do not put it in the dishwasher until it's fully cured, but the best results are going to be following the manufacturer's guidelines. They're definitely okay to touch in less than 21 days. It's just that the paint is fully cured and on on there if you allow that time. So I'm going to end with this part of it. We'll continue on doing the other glasses and again I'm not going to put you through that. You can see how I'm doing it. And I'm not doing the stem because I probably will be painting the stem white so I'm not doing the stem part. Just the ball part of the glass minus the where the tape is at. 
just allow room for lips to touch without touching the paint. So I'm going to continue on doing these and then I will be back starting the tree design. And I will continue on with that here shortly. Alright, so I have my glitter on. As you can see, I've given it uh, a few hours to dry, probably more than what I needed to. I'm going to go ahead and take my tape off, and then I'm going to show you how I do the design of the, the tree itself. Alright, so I have my clean line here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I create the tree. I am going to be using, I always forget to say this, my, oh you can't hardly see it now, it's a number, or it's a one-eighth, kind of like your flat brush, but it's the Glass Art by Dynasty number 71, and again it's painted over so it's pretty hard to see, but it's a one-eighth brush and kind of resembles the flat brush. And then the number eight, excuse me, it's the number three, I can't read tonight, a Glass Art by Na Dynasty number 72. And this is a, I guess, version of a smaller round brush. Then I'm going to be using Wicker White for the tree itself, and it's multi-surface paint, and Burnt Umber, which is also multi-surface paint, both are by Folk Art, and that will be the little lines that I put in the trees or the branches, I should say. Alright, so I'm just going to start with my awesome brush and just go around. I'm trying just to hit it at the, the beginning of the base of the, or the foot, I should say, of the glass. I might have to go over this with another coat. Right now I'm just going to show you how to do the tree itself and then in another video I'll come back and show you the different things that I'm going to be doing actually for leaves and such on the trees. So just kind of stretching this out a little bit. But I want to start with the bottom first. Again, I might need to go over it with another coat. These brushes do an awesome job of coating in the first coat, but sometimes you still may need to go over it with, with another coat. And this is the Wicker White, which is a folk art paint, the multi-surface. I'm trying to switch over from the, just the enamels to the multi-surface paints. So I keep, when I go to the store, I keep adding more. But it really depends, since I'm not actually ordering it online, it depends on what they have available as to what I can actually add to my collection. And there are certain colors I use more than others, so that's a factor as well. And because the stem is, is little or short, with it being a beer glass, um, you know, my tree stump is not going to be as big as what it typically, or the, the body of the tree, you know, as typically as it would be if it was on a bigger wine glass. But guess what? We just kind of have to use our imagination, right? Alright, so I'm just going to keep doing this. Just look over it and see if you've gotten it to the coverage that you desire. I mean, it covers well, honestly, with these type of brushes regardless. But I'm just going to go around in a circular motion until I get it where I think I want to start branches. And then I'll switch over to my other brush. So I have so many little projects going on. I've got a new thing that I'm going to, well, I'm going to try. Maybe get into creating. Something I found that seems to be kind of a trend or is trending and something that I can do. But I'm going to try one and then I will share with you if it works. Oh, wish me luck. 
You'll have to come back and see me. So you just have to stay tuned. So like I said, depending on your design, sometimes you may need to allow a little drying time. Sometimes just hitting it with a heat gun or a hair dryer is sufficient. And then there are times where you just get a better, a better dry dryness out of your glass if you just give it some hours of drying in between coats or design, you know, parts of the design that you're doing. So I'm just going to leave this right here at this and then I'm going to start on the branch, branching it out a little bit. But like I said, I am going to switch over to my other, uh, my other paintbrush just for the mere fact that I think it'll be easier to control the design. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and dip in here and get it all wet. Just Again, it's just a one, one color that I'm doing. And I'm just basically at this point... Now I can make it look like it's separate trees, but I'm not really going to do that. I am though just going to make this a thicker looking branch. And then maybe come out here, lift up my brush a little bit, and do a thicker looking branch. And then just maybe pull one off of here. Kind of wiggling it a little bit as I go, just to give it some interest. So it's not so straight. Because as we know in nature, nature doesn't really grow straight a lot of times. It's curvy, there's imperfections, there's a variety of things, so... Just kind of follow up with that. And then I'll just <clears throat> keep doing this, you know, with the thicker branches. You know, it doesn't have to be as thick as the first one. And no two will be alike. I mean, that's that's the beauty of this. When you're just, you're doing trees and branches and such, no two glasses are going to be alike. I mean, that's just... I don't know if that's unfortunate or fortunate because I kind of like things to be different. But for some people, that isn't how they roll. So that can be unfortunate if you've got somebody that's expecting something to be exact. It's not necessarily going to be that way. So right now I'm just doing the basic parts of the branches. And I, I guess... You know, my point is here, there's really no, it's really kind of your take on how you want that part of it to look. Um, there's really not a, well, you got to have it so many inches from here, or it has to be this size, or so many branches, or whatnot. It's really what you're, you want it to look like. I mean, it's your piece. Make it speak about your, your design. Not, not what somebody else would do, but what you're doing. <clears throat> let somebody else do it the way they would want to do it. And let yours speak about who you are. I mean, that's the one thing nice about being able to be creative. Is the fact that you can let things kind of flow and, and make it look the way you want it. I think sometimes people forget that when they're so critical of other people's work that just because it may not be how you would have done it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that that's what that person, they did the way they wanted to do it. And I know even on whether it's Facebook or YouTube or whatnot, a lot of the different social networks, people can be really kind of mean. And it's like, you know, honestly... You know, if that isn't how you would do it, doesn't mean that's not that the person didn't do it okay. And I guess I kind of look at art as, you know, there's people, they teach you stuff and teach you different techniques and all. But, really? Do you have to do everything exactly like that? No. kind of one of the things about going back to maybe some people's parents didn't teach them this but 
You know, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything. Just don't say anything. If you don't like it, be constructive and say, well, this is maybe how I would have done it. But you don't have to be nasty about it. I mean, some people may not like the fact that I did glitter behind mine. I like it. And I know because of the extra paint being on here, it's going to be more durable. I mean, that's just, that's it. It's going to be a more durable piece. And that's what I was looking for. You know, plus the glittery part. I really do like glitter. And you know, some people may not really be into it. And that's great. That's fine. <clears throat> yeah, have you ever had an experience with someone when you know you did something and you thought, oh my gosh, I just love this? And then somebody else doesn't quite see it that same way and they they're not very nice about it and then you, you get kind of like oh my goodness I really thought that it was nice I liked it I can't believe that it's that it you know they don't you know that I'm, I didn't do a good job if you ever have that happen make a comment down below if you'd like to share your experience I'd love to hear it Alright, so this look around, and like I said, in my past videos, I have indicated that I do like my, my branches kind of crossing over, just for the mere fact that it makes, makes it feel more uh, realistic to me. But again, that is my preference, doesn't have to be yours. Alright, I think at this point I'm just going to leave it like this. And then what my next step is going to be is to, well, I think I'm going to go around my base again. And then I'm going to, to start throwing in the little lines that people tend to put on birch trees. And then I'm just going to let it settle and create the next video around what, how I would finish off the tree with the different types of leaves, if I'm indicating a different season uh, for each glass, a different color, making them easy to determine from one person to the next whose glasses, glass belongs to whom while they're drinking. I think that can be such a problem at times when people are drinking and then they, well I just sat, sat my glass here, where's my glass at? Have you seen my glass? Well. Looks like all the other glasses sitting around. I'm not sure which is yours. Alright, so just see how I crossed over some of my branches and just left some openings down in here because I'm going to do a lot of the leaving will be up, you know, the, in the branches. And so then I'm going to take, and I didn't pull this out, but I'm going to take a liner brush. Actually, I'm going to use my little, <clears throat> this is a nail brush. It's an angle spotter. It's actually a Princeton brush for nails. Now, I could hit this with, with a hair dryer, and I just might do that. Go ahead and hit it and dry it a little bit. All right, and I'm just going to quickly show you some lining on this. I'm kind of afraid my video might run out. And I'm just taking my little curved brush and I'll just go around and I'll be careful on this part of it because it is thick so it may actually run, not run, but pull up some of the white as I'm doing this. But I'm just doing light lining and I just don't want to, like I said, ruin, ruin the design because I'm pulling up the white paint, but I did hit it with a, with a heat gun. The problem being is that the paint is pretty thick, like in that spot. So I'm trying to just hit it on the top of the paint. So you might want to choose to allow it to dry a little bit before you, you know, put these on here. 
but like I said, you know, I'm, I'm kind of making them, I'm not, I don't want them to be straight lines. And maybe I do, but from my design I don't want it to be a straight line. And then just trying to put them in here. You know, whether it's not a certain, it's not a set pattern, I don't want it to be where it looks like it's a set pattern. And you just keep doing it until you get the whole thing covered. So it does take some time. As you can tell, it's going to take a little bit of time. Get my brush cleaned off. But I like these little curved brushes. I wasn't too sure when I first started seeing them. I wasn't kind of sure why they were like this. But actually when you're trying to draw on something, it makes a whole lot of sense. Even when you're trying to do some writing, they're easier to they're easier to do. And that may seem kind of odd, but they it really they are. Alright. Alright, so we kind of I don't want to bore you with this. So it does take a lot of time to do. But it really is, it's just kind of sporadically. Again, I just I'm trying to make sure. And I'm not pulling up too much white with it because it does tend to want to do that and and really you could just take a break and give it some chance to dry more like I did with the gold layering but see how pretty that is with the gold background I mean I think it's beautiful tell me what you think about it down in the comments below do you like it or do you think it would have been better to have left it off? You know, if you were doing this, what would you have done? And I just don't want it to look like everybody else's pattern. This is, you know, again, the first time I've painted a birch tree. So I'm kind of trying to put my own little twist in it, which is what you should do whenever you're trying to do a pattern that somebody else has done or that's a you know a fairly common pattern amongst glass painters I just don't want it to look exactly like somebody else's use my own my own twist on it if I can get this brown and I said it would definitely be easier to do if the white were drier. I'm not going to tell stories on that one. It would definitely be easier. But it's working out okay. Now the branch ones are not as thick. So maybe in some spots they could have actually been a little thicker. You just can touch them up or you know leave them that way. That's really okay. And if you look at it and you think, hey, maybe I should have should have added more in or whatnot, go ahead and go back and add more in. It's really not a timeline where you have to how long it should take or you know whatever that you can't go back in and then add to it because you can. little curved brush and I, it did come this way. Some people make their own. I don't know if you've ever, I think there are even videos on how to do it, but I haven't really paid too much attention to that. This one was already this way, so I'll just leave it at that. Now with the lines that you're putting on your glass, you can do, you know, the brown or black black is even nice or you can do grays doesn't have to be brown it's just the color I've decided to use at this point kind of almost reminds me of doing zebra stripes in a sense <clears throat> just putting a little touch here and there 
and not completely across. And you can just, you know, take your time doing it. Doesn't have to be, there's no racing involved. I promise you that. And like this one is crossing over, so I'm going to make sure my lines go in that direction. <clears throat> There to the end. You see that? Alright, I'm going to keep working on it. Alright, so I'm getting to the, the tail end of this. And feeling like I'm almost got it done. For one at least. So I have a lot more to do. But, this takes a little bit of time. It's worth the wait, which I think this is. And it'll turn out nice. Just a lot of painting, a lot of stripes. And honestly, with the way you put the or the way I'm going to be putting my leaves in. I may not have had to have done so many, but you know, I'd rather not have to worry about adding more once I get to that point. So I'm just kind of with these little ones, just putting a little like that. I mean, it doesn't have to go all the way across to the tip there. And this one will just be bringing them opposite direction, or I guess it's going a different direction, not the opposite per se, but <clears throat> it will be a change in direction. And then, like I said, the next video will show you how I do one of the seasons. Not sure yet how many parts are going to be in this series, but this will be the first part. Alright, if you like this so far, give me a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And hit that notification bell so you can see the next video when I proceed with the next part of this design. And share, share, share. There's a share button underneath the video. Make sure you hit that. Share it on your social networks and with your family and friends. All right. Until the next part of this, I will talk to you then. I won't see you, but I'll talk to you then. <music>